So this was really a, a very, very um, evenly played game. If you look at the stats, <clears throat> we averaged, um, I think, 3.5 a carry rushing the ball. I think they averaged 3.6. Um, third downs and fourth downs together, we were 6 of 16. They were 6 of um, 16. Or I'm sorry, we were 7 of 16. They were 6 of 16. Um, uh, two teams played clean football, no penalties, basically. Uh, we bumped into the guy on a punt. If it's not for that, we have two penalties for 10 yards. They had two penalties for 10 yards. So you have two teams that are evenly matched. Um, they'll, they would end up with more yards, total yards than us, because we out special teamed them about 157 yards, so almost a, f a football field and a half in special teams. And it was a draw on penalties. So the difference in the game was special teams. Um, 157 plus in our in our favor. Um, <clears throat> we had a turnover. Um, they had two, I believe. So, I mean, just basically an evenly matched game. Two good football teams. We're five for five in the red zone. They're two for three in the red zone. So uh, it's a good win for us. Uh, my concern coming down was what I told you guys uh, on Monday that we had nine players that were going to play significant snaps in the game that had never played in a conference game and never played on the road. And those guys played pretty well. So I thought our coaches did a good job. Uh, the players competed. Um, they're a good team. They're going to make plays. We're going to make plays. Uh, players stayed focused for two weeks and practiced well. They gave great effort. They were competitive. So was Baylor. Uh, so obviously it's a good win for us. And um, you know we got to enjoy this one and rally back and get ready to go to work tomorrow. What your kids show you today more than anything? The team? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I mean, I kind of felt like that this team liked each other. Their chemistry is good, but you never know. You got to get in a position to be in a hostile environment and be challenged like we were today. And what I told them after the game was, it's going to be this way every week in this league. I mean, I don't, I don't know any scores other than ours except for what early in the – before we played our game, some people were talking about other scores, but – they, they need to get ready that it's going to be this way every week. So um, hopefully they understand the importance of um, focus and the competitive nature of practice and not taking a day off. Mike, you guys have played this team. This is the third time you guys have played in a year. They've all been pretty competitive battles. Sure. What, what, what has, has – what, what do you make of the, the battles that you guys have had these two teams in the last, the last two times? I just think that uh, I think he's a good football coach. I think he's got um, – when you watch our teams play, there's no BS. There's no late hits. The guys aren't slamming people down. There's nobody talking trash. The guys just playing football. Not Teams don't get penalized very much. And I give them credit for that, which I've told him that. I've told him that several times when I, when I uh, talk to him. I appreciate his team, and I appreciate what they do. And I think we play the same way. I think we try to play the same way. So you have two, fo two good football teams that – are trying to do the right thing and play good, hard-nosed football. I think it was a strange game. First half was sort of kind of games you guys played last year. Mm -hmm. And then the second half arrived and it's fireworks. Everybody running up down the field, huge play. Yeah, well, like third quarter, really. Yeah. Third quarter was <clears throat> um, like a video game. Uh, so, you Does know, we, you? We, hit the punt, we hit the kick return, then we hit the deep ball, and then they went for the fourth down and hit the – whatever, 70-something yarder. Uh, then we, um, we stopped them on a fourth or something. Then we converted. Then we got on the half-yard line, <clears throat> uh, and everybody wanted me to go for it, but, you know, they lost their mind because kicking a field goal which makes it a three-score game. I mean, um, so we took the field goal instead of taking the chance. Uh, just a good football game, uh, but it just went back and forth, and I think that's what this league's going to be like over the next couple months. Is this, a, is this a, a form of showing you can win different ways with this team? Mm. I hope. Uh, it's too early to tell, but I thought the defense played really good. You know, it's interesting. When you play a team that's going to go for as many fourth downs as they do in certain situations, <clears throat> um, the results are going to be a little different because percentages are they're going to convert some of them. And then percentages are, if they don't, they're going to lose field position, which is a choice they make and a choice we could make. But so you're going to get a different feel in the game. They believe in 
their mid zone run. They really like their lineman up front. And so they're, they have some advantages there in those short yardage plays. And I think that's what contributes to a wild game against a team that goes for this many fourth downs in that style of offense. The decision to go for it on fourth down in that first draft, was that your call or Casey's call? Or um, well, those are all my calls, um, unless they don't work. And then they're Casey's calls. Uh, <laughs> but no, the fourth downs are my call. When we went into this game, since last year's championship game, I said when we get in the, close to the goal line or we get in short yardage, I want to convert. I want our players to know we can convert because we didn't do it in the championship game. And so we didn't coach them well enough. And that's my fault and the offensive coaches. And I said when we play them next year, we get in this situation, they need to know whether 62 is in the game or not, we're going to sneak the ball or we're going to run the ball and we're going to convert. Otherwise, uh, we're going to have a hard time winning. So we worked hard in the spring. You guys saw us in the spring do it. We did it in August. And whether 62 is in the game or not, we're going to convert. Now, in the end, uh, kicking the field goal changes the game based on how many possessions it takes for them to score. That's a different situation. But the first fourth down and then the other time we're in the goal line, we're going to, we're going to push it in there. Generally speaking, were you pleased with your short yardage offense mm -hmm. today? Yeah. Um, and that hasn't been a strength for us. I mean, we don't – most of our linemen are <clears throat> more fit for playing fast. They're not bulldozer guys based on the style of offense we run. Uh, so – but we improved on it, yes. And we challenged them. You know, we told 70 and 74, 66, and those guys, you got to block them. We know he's going to be there. you got to block them. Like what uh, Spencer's name, what were some of your takeaways from his uh, – mm -hmm. He played good. You know, he's 20 to 29. He got <clears> – <throat> they played cover two all day, and when he threw the pick, the corner carried the wide out, which in most cases tells him to throw the ball to the flat. And the guy, the guy drained underneath it, made a good play. But he converts a lot of plays with his legs. And you see that in college football now. Well, you're seeing it in the NFL too. You know, if your quarterback, in my opinion – what he brings to the table is, is he can convert first downs and keep the change moving with his legs. And in today's game, the way defenses play, over the last two to three years, it's changed considerably. If you can't do that at quarterback, in my opinion, it's going to be tough. He's been, Mike, he's been in the eye of the storm, obviously, because of last year. As someone who knows the position as well as anyone in the stadium, how, how happy are you for him? Who's that, Spencer? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I'm glad. For, you know, anybody that works and hard and, you know, Spencer's a competitive dude now. And uh, uh, we all know this because we cover him locally. We know that he's, for some reason, people don't give enough credit. It, it, it is what it is. Now, I mean, we can go back. I've always said this with him. Whenever we rush the ball decent, like today, we rushed the ball for 166 yards, which is a really good day against their defensive front. And if you protect him a little bit, he plays good. And that's what we did today, so we played pretty good. Championship game, we didn't protect him. Mike, you alluded to it there. Um, you know, in a normal game, you might be looking for a four and a half to carry, but it sounds like you're pleased with the number you did produce. I, yeah, you know, well. four and a half, I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I might take that back. Um, you know how you, uh, you know, sometimes you go back to your wife and you say, oh, I'll take that, I'm sorry, I mean to say that. I think four and a half is a little much right now. I'm going to go for – for if we can go 4.1-ish, then really the way that defenses are playing now, I, I'm going to buy that. So – but that front's good. They they just are because <clears throat> we have to adjust and take a – we have to know where 62 is. Can't just go in a game and come out of game and say he just kicked our butt. And we'd be like, well, that's not very smart. We knew he was going to kick our butt. So we had to adjust some things we do to help our offense, and we did it, but it's not the easiest thing to do. What do you think of Dominic? Play good. Good hard yards, protected the football. Um, and Ollie got exactly what I told you guys was going to happen with him. You have a young guy and gets multiple carries and he gets tired. First thing he does is get lit up, and then what happens? Ball comes out. Now he'll be better next time for it, but that's what I was telling you guys in a week or two ago in the press conference is that's the issue you have with young players. Spencer knows that when he was young and you get tired and your mind wanders and, you know, that's when you got to be careful about taking care of football. 
And, and so Ollie, fortunately, we got it back. He made a heck of a play. But that's what happens when you're young. 20 comes in and he's a veteran. So he's, he's better at it. He can get tired and understands. And there's just no substitute for experience. What kind of crunch time whenever you gave Ollie the ball? Mm -hmm. what, what gave you that confidence in him? And was that kind of the beginning? He's practiced well. And, you know, he's played well, right? You guys have seen him. He's played well. But now he's, been, now he's played well. He's been tired. And he's carried the ball multiple times. And his head's wandering. And he's swinging. And got lit up. And the ball came out. And so we have confidence in him. And we still have confidence in him. Because he's a smart young man, and he'll learn from that mistake. Fourth and four, I think, from Baylor's 39 when you punted with Tom and they got the safety. The analytics probably say you go for that. But what kind of difference maker is Tom whenever he can go through that? Yeah, you know, in that situation, I think we were ahead by eight. Is that right? No, first pass, seven, three. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, then I, I, can't, I, I can't give you the analytics on that one. Um, fourth and four is a long ways. Uh, Rand is the only guy that'll do that. Or maybe the guy at Tech, he's been doing it. Um, Tom is really good at what he does, and our cover guys are really good at what they do. So I just believe in pinning them inside the 10 because I do know the analytics of a team going 90 plus yards are really low. Well, what I started this with this conference was we last year we were a very, very mature team, except for wideout. So you kind of know what you're going to get on the road. I honestly had no idea what we were going to get on the road in this game, other than I knew we would play hard and compete. But with so many young players had not played on the road, and this is the best team we played. So it was, uh, it was a good game for everybody, and it's good experience. Now they have to enjoy the win tonight and then come back to work and go tomorrow and come back tomorrow and go to work and not, not waste a day. That'll be the most important thing for those young guys, which they've been told. That's what I told them. Now, hopefully they listen. Mike, what, you, what, are, what are your overall thoughts on the defense and the way they, they responded to some mm -hmm. tough situations? They, they, they played good. Um, you know, you can look and um, they held them to 3.6 a carry running the ball. That's pretty good. They hit us on a couple throws. Um, <clears throat> The fourth and four, they went for and hit the hit the over out, and he went to the house. We changed the, the call. Basically, it's my fault because they checked it, and I told Mace, <clears throat> I want you to check it and change it. And he changed it, and it was too late. Not too late, but it was really too late. And then by the time they got the call, we lost the over out. And so right, wrong, or indifferent, that was my fault. And I usually know better than to make a decision on defense because I'm not a defensive guy. But, but um, um, they looked over and checked it. And I said, Mace, check, check, check. And he checked it. And it didn't get in quick enough. And, and so we didn't get lined up. And he missed the over out. And that's my fault. It really is. I mean, I'm being honest with you. So um, I took that one. Mike, your receivers have three excellent catches, too. Bryson Green had two of them, mm -hmm. acrobatic type stuff. How much does it help to know you got guys who can do that? Yeah, you know, that was the difference. You know, that was where we really struggled last year because we didn't have any threat out. We had so much youth on the perimeter. Now we have Braden that can run by you. Um, and and um, Green is physical, plays physical football. Um, played really well. He had a drop there at the end. I mean, it would have been a tough catch, but... Um, you know, 17 and 80, those guys that can make those intermediate catches for us. Um, give us, they put us back into the flow of who we are on offense for, compared from last year. Jaden's kick, kick return pretty much by what you design or what Wozniak designed. Yeah, Woz is, living. you know, we have uh, four guys that coach our special teams and we have an analyst and um, they do a really good job. So when you just think about traditional football, our punt today was excellent, right? And the one punt nobody's talking about is at the end when we had to tight punt because they came all block and I don't know how long that punt was, 50 yards, 45, 50, and it was almost a five second hang time. So we flipped the field and they didn't get a return. That's a big deal, big deal. Last question, Coach. Did you know Nixon had that in mm -hmm. you, know, you got Nixon, you teams have two guys that can <clears throat> Yeah, that. so he's real shifty and he's, uh, 
he's extremely fast. You know, he was, uh, I think he's run a few 10 sixes in high school. Um, so when he stumbled and got uh, about the 50 yard line, when he kind of fell and then he got up, most of the time the defense will catch you because he's falling. But I, I mean, I was watching, I knew he was gone because it only takes him two steps and he's back at close to four or five speed and, and he can roll. So we have weapons there with those guys, and they're very well coached. The, the, the guys that are responsible for that, um, multiple coaches that are doing a really good job of coaching those guys, and they're listening and paying attention. For more information, you can visit TulsaWorld.com.